Okay, in this week's Weather Extra, we're going to talk about the unusual October we've been having. Have you been enjoying Fogtober, as uh, some people have taken to calling it? It's been an exceptionally gray month in the Bay and a time of year when we're not really supposed to see a whole lot of this. We can still get the marine layer in October, but we're not supposed to get it nearly as often or as widespread or as long-lasting as we've had it this month. And I want to talk about the influence that that has had on fire season for us because we are right in the heart of the biggest concerning time of year in terms of our risk to the weather's ability to bring us uh, a higher risk of fire and a really heightened fire season this time of year. But we're not there. And a, a large part of the reason is this. And on October 17th, the marine layer did something pretty unusual. I'm gonna hit play on this. We're gonna watch a time lapse of this from that morning. And you're gonna see something quite different than what you normally see the marine layer do. And if you've watched this over the years, you know what typically happens is the marine layer comes in the Golden Gate, onshore. That's doing the opposite. Really weird and unusual to see it. You've got to have just the right circumstances for that. And in one sense, this very odd show of the marine layer going backwards, going offshore, was a sign that we are starting to turn the season now and we're starting to get more into a typical fall pattern. Because the reason the marine layer was doing that it's because it was getting pushed off the shore by a very subtle offshore wind, obviously. This is what September and October and November can bring us. If we get strong offshore wind events, we start to get into concerning fire weather situations. This one was fairly mild, but take a look up on Mount St. Helena. There was a 20 mile an hour gust up there while everybody else just had a light breeze. You never would have known we were having an offshore wind event if we didn't have that persistent marine layer sitting in the bay to kind of act like die in the stream and show us the winds were actually going offshore. So we kind of had this convergence of a summer-like pattern with a really persistent marine layer. At the same time, the atmosphere wants to start shifting to fall and start giving us the offshore wind events. And that's why we got that really unusual show where the marine layer was going out the Golden Gate. You, you don't see that much. So here's what we've looked like for much of October. Beautiful high resolution satellite imagery. This was taken on October 14th, 2022. Here's the comparison. What would it typically look like on October 14th? Well, we can actually look at that. Let's go back one year, October 14th, 2021. And that's what it typically looks like off the coast here. Or if we're not lucky, and we really are getting into the heart of fire season, you can visualize the offshore winds not using the marine layer getting blown offshore through the Golden Gate, but you can visualize the offshore winds by watching the smoke coming off the wildfires. And for that, we're going to go back to November 8th, 2018, still in this fall offshore wind season. That was the plume of smoke coming off of the campfire on November 8th, 2018. And then on November 9th, the day after it really went going, there was a lot of smoke. But the reason why I'm showing this is just because it really gives you the visual idea of how offshore winds treat California this time of year. They take those wildfires, they push the smoke off the coast, but more importantly, it's the northeast winds coming over the mountains, which tend to dry out the landscape more and also get fires going with lower humidities and higher temperatures. We haven't had to deal with that so far this summer, or I should say this fall. And one other quick way of visualizing how we've gotten off easy this fall. This is a weird looking plot of when and how often the National Weather Service has to issue red flag warnings. It goes over here on the scale from years. There's 2006 on the top all the way down to 2021 on the bottom. And the months of the year go along the bottom. January's there, December's back here. Do you see the pattern? Where do the red flag warnings tend to congregate? What time of year are you most likely to have red flag warnings being issued by the National Weather Service here in Sacramento? Right here, these two months. Those are September and October. And of course, over the last few years, you see a lot more of them. We don't need an explanation there. We've all lived through the last few years, but clearly there's been a pattern. We've seen a lot more red flag warnings getting issued by the National Weather Service over the last few years, but the pattern of when still holds, September and October. 
This is our time of year to have to live with the notion and the preparation for fire season, except this year we haven't because of a very intense marine layer and an onshore flow. But it hasn't been felt equally across the state. This is the map showing you the temperature anomalies going back over the last two weeks. There's a lot of deep red on here. I mean, not just for inland California, but for the rest of the West. All of these locations in deep red have been well above average for temperatures for the last 15 days, except when you come in for a close-up look and you can see the Bay Area shaded in blue. We've been blissfully unaware that the rest of California and the rest of the West for that matter, but let's just keep it local, the rest of California has not been experiencing the unusual October we have. In one sense, they've been experiencing an October that we've gotten all too used to. It's been way above average temperature wise, especially here in the Sierra Nevada. Look at that big band of red going through the mountains. That's one of the parts of the state we'd be most concerned about heading into fire season. They've been well above average for temperatures over the last two weeks, but here at home, We've been protected and shielded by this really unusual and kind of nice fogtober. So we're not thinking about fire season here, but we should be thinking about fire season over here. And here's one last visualization for that. This is the map that shows you that measurement called the vapor pressure deficit. I know it sounds weird, but this is one way of measuring the landscape's interaction with the atmosphere and how primed the atmosphere is to pull more moisture out of the landscape because temperatures are so high and the landscape's already dry and those two work together to give the atmosphere kind of that sponge effect to pull moisture out of the landscape. This is an important measurement when you look for fire concerns, for fire weather concerns. And for the Sierra Nevada, there's still a high degree of concern here. That's a fairly high reading right now. So while we've been living summer in the Bay Area, the rest of the state has still been getting primed for fire season. And we still have another four or five or six weeks to go where we are vulnerable to some of these offshore wind events. And that's something we'll have to keep an eye on as we start to lose this onshore influence, which inevitably is going to happen in the fall. Hopefully we get big rains before we get the strong offshore wind events. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagan will be in next week with another one.